good morning, everybody. Um, I will be handing over quickly to um, Ms. Margaret Motsepe. Um, as she wants to make an announcement quickly, and then um, I will hand over to the program director so that we can start with um, with, a, with the actual information session. Uh, Ms. Motsepe, you are welcome to, I know you want to make an announcement, so you're welcome to do so at the moment. Thank you. Yes, good, uh, good morning, uh, colleagues and students. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm responsible for forums for students with disabilities. And uh, as you know, we had three years uh, not having any forums which are in place. So what I would, I would request is uh, maybe after this session, what students can do is to form interim committees. Uh, and uh, after forum, forming that interim committee, they should just uh, send the names of those students to our office until we form, uh, f uh, we establish forums for students with disabilities. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Margaret. Um, we will we will do that. The students that are in the in the session, um, I hope you've taken. How notice. many? Sorry, how many are they? Um, let me see at the moment. Whoops. I'm trying to quickly have a look for you. One, two, three. We have six students in at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm sure uh, some more will join us, but at the moment there are six students. Okay, let me give you uh, the portfolios which they should concentrate on. Okay, can you can you please, uh, if you could put that for us in the chat, if you write it all down, then the students can get that in the chat. Oh, uh, let me see. Okay, I'll do that. Ne? Yeah, then they can, you know, then they can continue. Then, um, because if we just say it to them, people might forget. But if we put it in the chat, they can go and look at the chat so they can see what those portfolios are. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. OK, thank you. Thank you. All right, I think um, since we have, a, uh, have uh, students with us, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to the program director so that we can start with the, with the actual session. Um, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so, so very much for making time to spend that part of your morning with us today. Firstly, I would like to observe protocol. A very warm greeting are extended to our heads of facilitation and learning. That is Dr. Dooley, who's situated here at Sunnyside campus, and Ms. Bonzaya, who's at Florida campus. Also, well, well, warm welcome are extended. Warm greetings, excuse me, are extended to our regional academy coordinators from different offices within UNISA. Our honorable sign language interpreter, whom you can see right now on the screens, her name is Ms. Sophie Mabaso. Of course, our honorable students, colleagues, and guests that may be amongst us. You are all welcome to the information sessions for the students with disabilities regarding the facilitation of learning and support services. My name is Elara Tosibia. As I have been introduced by Ms. Priesman, our regional academic coordinator based here at Sunnyside campus. So I'm just going to be a program director for the duration of the session. Kindly note that this session is solely to make you students aware about the services and support systems that are geared for all of you from our various sections within UNISA. And kindly be aware that disability is at the core of our being and what we do daily here at work. Hence, we are all gathered here today to share our insights, our thoughts, and engage and support you all students wherever we can. Before I hand over to my colleague, Ms. Mahonga, who will be outlining the purpose of the meeting or the orientation, may I kindly deeply request you to observe the following rules. I also want to make you aware that currently the record, the recording session, we are actually recording the session. And I kindly beg you not to tamper with the camera. The camera is on and it's only for Ms. Mabaso. 
in this juncture. And may I also request that you pack your questions for when we get to the slot. So please, I beseech you, please switch off your camera so that they do, do not disturb the session. Thank you so much. Ms. Mahonga, I hand over to you, my colleague, to outline the techniques of this orientation. Thank you so much, colleagues. My task is very brief, and I'll simply mention the highlights of our session this morning. Uh, students, as you can see, this is an information session for students with uh, disability. And uh, uh, as we all know, whenever we talk disability, irrespective of where we are in the world, we are always saying nothing about us without us. And this is the mantra that we wish to use throughout our engagement with our valued students. Today, we have invited you to come and join us for this session simply because we would like to also use it as an opportunity to meet and greet you and also extend and open the door to say we are here and we need to work together with you. Anything that you need to be supported with, know that the door is always open. Anything that you are unhappy about, know that the door is always open. Anything new that you would like to suggest that we implement to support you better, you always know that it, you are welcome to come and contact us. You can come physically, you can write us emails, or you can even give us a call. Before I proceed on the purpose of the session today, may I also conscientize you on the importance of using your My Life email address. This is the official UNISA email address. And every time you communicate with us, please use that email. Because if you use any other way of communicating with us using your personal or private email address, your communication might not reach the right person. And also, when you use that My Life email address, whenever you share your contact details, please double check that you've captured all the information correctly because we've come across instances where students would miss a digit or perhaps type something incorrect in, in, in the rest of the email address and then the correspondence also get lost. It, it's not easy to pick up on all those little errors. Sometimes we do manage to catch them and correct them for the student, but not always. So it is of paramount in, importance for you to make sure that your email address is always correct. Uh, moving on to the purpose of the session today, my colleagues who will be representing what we call Gauteng region, which is also one of the areas where you would receive additional support to what you already receive from the university uh, in terms of the college you are registered under, the support that you've uh, received also from the directorate that supports students with disability, we are also saying to you, we are here to offer yet another wing of support to ensure that your journey as a student proceeds without any hiccups where possible. Today, my colleagues will be discussing with you the support that we offer in terms of your academic writing. Since we are all students here at UNISA, you've probably already started engaging with your study material if you, you are a new student. And I'm sure probably amongst us, we also have returning students and we also have experienced students who have been students here at UNISA. So we are all saying every student, irrespective of where you are, our region, which is Gauteng region, is there to support you in terms of your academic writing so that you submit work that is of the acceptable standard for an institution of higher learning. My colleagues will also brief you on digital learning support services. I'm sure you are already aware of the services that are there to support you as a student with disability, but we would also like to emphasize it and also point out what we have in our specific centers, because we are talking of centers here 
as I've said, Gauteng region would be having your Sunnyside Center, your Florida Center, Johannesburg, Eguruleni and Val Center. So they, they, wherever you would like to be supported, you'll be contacting your colleagues, our colleagues in those centers. Also, the colleagues from the library will share with you the kind of support that they have for you as a student with disability. And again, once more, there is nothing about us without us. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Mahonga. We really appreciate the outline of the purpose of this orientation, and I hope students have also found something fruitful. Without any waste of time, I would like to introduce Ms. Priesman, who is our Regional Academy Coordinator based at Sunnyside Campus. She will be sharing about the facilitation of learning and services that we have. Thank you so much. Welcome, Ms. Priesman. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, students. Um, I would like to share with you today the various kinds of services that we offer here in the Gauteng region to help our students to be successful with their studies. Um, these are just, just the general services that we have, and then we will also look a little bit at um, the special services that we have specifically for our students with disability. Okay, the services that we offer, um, we have got academic literacy workshops. Uh, we've got, uh, we support our differently abled students. So, um, and then we also have our computer labs and our digital learning. I will explain a little bit more about all of those things. Okay, our academic literacies, uh, we call it shortly ACCALIT. Uh, you might also get used to the, the acronym if you hear us speaking about ACCALIT. You will know it's about all the academic literacies that we are talking about. So what is academic literacies? This is a program where we have a facilitator that guides our students on the basic and the general content, content as per their field of study. So students are assisted on how to improve their academic reading and writing and how to engage their studies. So it's specifically regarding your academic reading and writing, which is, as we all know, different from normal reading and writing. The purpose of the program is to equip our students with the necessary academic skills so that you can become independent students. To enable our students to understand the academic language that is used in your specific college or in your specific modules which is also like a, a completely new language when you when you start with your studies. It's also to equip students with theoretical knowledge for the preparation of the labor market. So what do we offer in this program for undergraduate students? We offer this, this program, the academic literacies, is offered for both the undergraduate and also for our postgraduate students. Speak a little bit about what we have regarding for the undergrad students. We have what we call uh, the reading and writing section of it, which is really, as I've already indicated, about academic reading and writing skills. So it helps you to refine your, your academic reading, to understand what you are reading so that you can, when you write your assignments or, or later on when you write a thesis, that you know how to, to write, write academically um, for your lecturers and, and for the studies. We also have quantitative literacy. Now that is um, about numeracy skills for our students registered for modules with numbers and calculations, for instance, like mathematics or statistics. We find that many of our students also struggle with the, the language of quantitative literacy. So we also offer uh, facilitators who can help with that. The, we offer workshops uh, and one-on-one -on -one consultations for our students. So there will be a facilitator who will give a workshop on a specific topic for specific modules regarding either quantitative or reading and writing. Or, and if there's still more that you would like to know, you can also make an, a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a facilitator to, to help you with other uh, things that might might you still might not understand from the facilitation session. 
pro postgraduate students, um, that is to capaci capacitate specifically our students who are studying honors, um, postgraduate diplomas, masters, and doctoral degrees with research skills. Uh, the further you go in your studies, and you will then experience the more your research skills are important. Uh, there are also workshops held for those students uh, on things like doctoral proposal writing, research methodology, research instruments, sample and sample size. These are just a few examples that are then covered in the workshops for our postgraduate students. The workshops are offered as scheduled by staff members and the facilitators. So between the staff and the facilitator, they work out the schedules and we make those schedules available to the students so that you can then attend those sessions. As I've already explained, there are also one on one consultations. Students may book with a facilitator for a one on one consultation if there's specific things that you might want more clarity on which was not clarified completely for you in the session. The facilitators are available on weekdays and on Saturdays. Usually these sessions are held after hours, usually from four o'clock in the afternoons or sometime into the evening and then on, on Saturdays as well, so that students who are employed are also able to join. So um, we will give the schedules to you and how you can actually access those schedules. You can do that um, on, on the MyUNISA link. Uh, the workshop schedules are available on MyUNISA. OK, the first step is you would then click on MyUNISA. Step two is you would click on student support. And on the regions, there's a heading that says that, so you would click on that heading. Then you click on the next heading, which is tutorial schedules. Then you click on the Gauteng as um, that uh, the, it will show the various regions. So you will click on Gauteng and, and then the drop down arrow. And then you will choose the center um, that you are that you are um, wanting to attend those workshops in. It will give you a couple of centers. OK, but um, we are now uh, busy with um, the schedules, how to access the schedules on MyUNISA. I was speaking uh, regarding that. OK, as I said, I was at step four. You would then click on Gauteng and on the drop down arrow where you would choose the relevant center, as Ms. Mahonga has already earlier indicated that we have five centers. So you click on the center that you are uh, a part of. And then all the workshop details will be there. The invite link will also be shared on the My Life email address. So when we when we we send out an invitation to you uh, to invite you to the workshops, the accolade workshops, you will receive an invitation just as you as you've now received an invitation um, for this workshop and this session. You will receive an invitation for the for the accolade workshops for your specific modules. And in that, there will be a link. So again, if you want to join, you can then also click on that link. OK, OK, here we are. Then the range of support services that we offer here at UNISA to our students is, first of all, on the left hand side, the My UNISA and the My Life email. My UNISA has got all kinds of information there for you available. Um, as Ms. Mahonga has also indicated already, the My Life email. That is very, very important that if you haven't yet activated that or that you must do that. It is very important and any communication that you use with UNISA, you must use that email address. Um, that is the official communication platform between the university and the students. So always use your My Life email rather than any other email address. That is how we will. Uh, we also will communicate with you if there's general things that are being sent out from the university as well. It will go out on your My Life email address and not on any other email that uh, you might be using. We have also had um, tutorial services. Um, if you're an, um, an older student that have been with us for a few years, you might know about tutorial services. Currently, we are not having the tutorial services. As soon as they are running again, we will uh, inform students about that. 
We have library services where you can um, um, get books and any other kinds of support that you need. Uh, we have somebody from the library who will be um, speaking also and giving a presentation and explaining a bit more of what exactly the services are that they offer. Then the academic literacy workshops that I've already spoken about. There's also your lecturers. Um, it's always a good idea to try and, and contact your lecturers, make contact with them, send them an email, try to get them on the phone um, and introduce yourself. It's, it's important to do that. That's one way of also the lecturer to get to know you and to be able then to help you with also any other things that you might have regarding the contents of your studies. Uh, we have counselling services, so if you're struggling with things, either on a personal level or even with uh, study methods or so on, you can contact the counselling services as well and they can support you also. You will receive study guides from the university in, and they can be um, given to you in various formats. I will speak to that very soon now. You will receive your tutorial letter. Your tutorial letter usually comes with your um, study guides. The first tutorial letter is a very important tutorial letter because usually in that tutorial letter you will find your um, assignments that you need to, to, to hand in. You will also find all the details of your lecturer in that tutorial letter and any other kind of information that you might need regarding that specific module that you are doing. So it's, it's vitally important that you read your, especially your first tutorial letter to know what's going on. The follow-up tutorial letters that you might receive is usually regarding feedback of your assignments or anything else that you might know that the lecturer would like to communicate with you regarding your studies or regarding exams. So make sure that you that you read your tutorial letters when you receive them. In some um, modules, our lecturers also share videos with you. So um, uh, if you're able to then enjoy those videos as well. They are sometimes also supplemented in terms of the information that you might need regarding your studies. Uh, usually there's a year planner with the material that you receive as well. Use that to uh, plan out where your assignments are and what's going on and so on. So these are the general services that we offer. <clears throat> As I've spoken already, we have got five centres which make up the Gauteng region with five campuses. The one here in Sunnyside, where we are broadcasting from at the moment. Then there's a, a centre in Florida, Ikoreleni, Johannesburg and Val. So all these places have a campus of UNISA. And if you're in any one of those areas um, and you are able to and you want to, you can go to those centres as well for support or you can contact the people at those centres and um, they, can then, they can then give you the support that you are requesting. OK, I am now specifically going to speak to um, our students who are with disabilities. Um, this is specifically an information session for this group of students that we at the university have and we would really like to support you because uh, many of our students with disability might have or might need a different kind of support besides the normal support that um, other students are, are having and we would really like to support you. Okay so the idea of this is to create an environment where our students who are differently abled will have the full participation and equal opportunities with regards to teaching and learning to create an environment where students will feel comfortable to disclose how they are differently able to what kind of disabilities they might have so that we can provide them with specific needs and support. Um, as I've indicated, it is very important for you to uh, make known to the university if you are a student with disabilities so that we can know what kind of support we might have to, to give you and that we can engage with you. OK, differently able students can request staff at the, at the registration points to assist them in completing the application forms and applications for fee reduction. Um, there, there are forms available for that as well. 
There is a special assistance form which is available if you require any special support services. So make sure that you complete that form and that you, that you request that form and that you complete that form. Also, to check if the special assistance form has reached us, then contact the regional centre where you submitted the form. For instance, Sunnyside or Florida, Wild Johannesburg or Ekurileni. Um, so you can just contact and see if the, if the form has reached us so that we can follow up and see how to um, provide you with the support that you need. OK, being differently abled may also qualify you for a Department of Labour bursary, which is based on your income. Now, our ARC suite can, this, can assist to motivate for assistive devices. Now, ARC suite is our advocacy and resource centre for students with disability. Uh, you can contact them as well, and they can, uh, they, can, they can assist you in completing those forms for the Department of Labour, and they can also um, help you write the motivations. They can also explain to you what kind of assistive devices are available and how you can apply for them. Then, based on individual need, a student could also receive study guides and tutorial letters either in Braille or in large print or electronic or audio formats. So if, if you need maybe your study material, not just in the normal printed matter that, that we send out to the majority of our students, but if you need it in some kind of another um, format, you can also contact us and so that we can see how we can then make that material available to you so that it is more accessible to you. Uh, you can also make a request for electronic versions of prescribed books from publishers. Um, I think that uh, the person who will be speaking about the library might speak a little bit more about that as well. But many of the books are also available nowadays as an electronic version. So um, we can also help you to receive the prescribed books then in that format. Then um, advice on low vision devices can be provided to partially sighted students. We can help you with that as well. Furthermore, we also offer orientation and mobility training, which is also done at the regions and we can organize it to be done at the various centers as well. You must just please inform us about that so that we can arrange these trainings to be done. Sign language interpretation services and basic sign language classes can be offered to our deaf students. Um, you need to contact the regional centre so that we can arrange that. As you can see today, we have Ms. Mabasu who is um, signing for our students. So um, she is also available and we can then also arrange four sessions, but you need to contact us because um, we, we need to check um, diaries and dates and so on. Specially equipped computer labs for our differently abled students are also available at the Gauteng Regional Centres. Uh, and for more information regarding that, you can contact the relevant centres. In those computer labs, these are special computer labs. We will have somebody who speaks about our computer labs in generally, with the general services we offer there. But there is usually a, a computer lab that has the special equipment for students with disabilities. And that can range from special um, software, which can, can, can help you, or even some of the, 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 the hardware that we use is also um, uh, different and adapted to students with disabilities. So we have those computer labs as well. And you're more than welcome to contact us regarding them. Okay, thank you. That has been um, my presentation at the moment. Thank you so, so very much, Ms. Priesman. I would like to believe that our students also found this information extremely prudent from you, Janine. And they would, of course, take advantage of all these services that we have. Without much ado, I would like to um, welcome from our library services, Mr. Zulu or Mr. Malapisi. Either one of them will give us a presentation on information literacy from library. Once again, uh, colleagues, good morning. My name is Moses Malapisi. I'm from the library based uh, here at Sunnyside. Um, I'm also with my colleague, uh, Mr. Zulu, who will be joining me uh, because he's attending another meeting. But as soon as uh, he's done, he will be joining me. Uh, colleagues, let me start by actually um, 
appreciating the effort that uh, you are making to make sure that we provide and we create awareness to services that we provide uh, to our students uh, uh, with disabilities. Uh, as from the library side, um, we are always on record that uh, we are there to support uh, our students. Um, I will begin by um, making aware our students that we have um, centers where they can visit the library to access the services of the library. As you can see, you have uh, Ikurulene, Johannesburg, Sunnyside, and Val, and Florida campuses. Those are UNISA um, uh, regional uh, libraries. Uh, any student who is registered with um, necessary documentation in terms of the student card proof of registration, they can access uh, those uh, libraries there. Uh, the only thing that they have to do, they just have to produce their student card and proof of registration. Then they will have access to services that we provide in the library. Um, services that we provide in the library, we provide um, lending services. We also do library training. A student can also request a literature search. When the students are doing their research or their assignment, if they need additional uh, information, they can get that assistance from the library. We also have what we call the research support. Research support, you have the personal librarians, search librarians, which are dedicated to uh, 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 support, particularly those students who are doing postgraduate. Um, the personal librarians and the social librarians are there to support you in that regard. Whenever you're doing your PhD, your master's, uh, honors degree, they are there to support you. Uh, we have library commons. Library commons, it simply means it's a dedicated space for students to come and use, to access my UNISA, uh, my life, to access library catalog, to do the assignment, to write the assignment, to do their research. So we provide that uh, service for all um, our students. Um, as you can see, we also provide services for students living with, with disabilities. Um, we have um, dedicated uh, uh, um, equipment, uh, assistive, assistive devices, workstations. So whenever you come to the library, you are going to be assisted in that regard. Um, the lending services include borrowing of books. After using those books, you can return them back to the library. If you are still using that book, you can renew that uh, library. You can you can you can renew that uh, library material. So what is important is your due date when you borrow uh, the book. You must always check your due date, and whenever you are done using the book, you must return the book. If you are still using uh, that book, of course, um, you can renew that particular book. Uh, we have different types of collection. We have what we call study collection, uh, prescribed collection. We also have a postal collection. Postal collection, uh, those are the books that you can only get uh, via a post, meaning that you have to request them online. And then once you have requested them online, they can be posted to a, a designated a place that you have chosen. So it is very important that when you do this postal collection, you indicate where you want this book or where you can collect this book and the library will do so. Uh, we also have audiovisual collection, which is also the main campus. We have also what we call archival, archival collection. Um, it's also available at the uh, main campus. This archival collection, it's uh, one of those collections that is very, we can say very sensitive or very scarce, uh, very, very scarce to, to locate or to access. So normally we put those um, material in a special place, which we call archi archives. So we basically store or preserve them for future use. So, but the students, if there's a, any information that is located in the archival collection, 
uh, the students are allowed to go and use that uh, material. You will get um, a personal, uh, you will get a librarian in that uh, section to assist you to locate or to access that information. Uh, we have what we call a library catalog to search for information in various format. Uh, as you can, as you, you are aware that we have different types of information in various format. We have print, we also have electronic format. So you use the library catalog so that you can locate uh, that information. Like um, I've indicated that you have the library catalog, you find books using the library catalog. Uh, you also have your prescribed book recommended books. You can also use uh, the course code to search for books. We also have journals, also called periodicals. They are also available in print and electronic format. Uh, we also have our online resources, uh, for an example, databases, ebooks, e journal, e dissertation, and thesis. So, whenever you are doing your research, um, you need assistance to locate this information, we are free to ask for assistance from the library. We can help you to access this information, prescribed books, journals, uh, electronic. Um, uh, books, we are there to assist you. Uh, if you want to find the library catalog, you can visit a uh, UNISA homepage, uh, unisa.ac.za, and then you will see the library there. And then you click on the library, then you'll have access to, to the library. Um, this is uh, more or less our homepage. So if you want to access our homepage, you can go there. And, and, and visit our homepage. But also remember that our homepage change often depending on the current event. So if you don't see um, this type of a picture there on the homepage, uh, uh, don't panic, they always change. Um, literacy research and research support. If you need additional information for your assignment or for your research topics, you can request a literature search as I've indicated you complete a literature search form available on the library website. Um, also, your research support, uh, as I've indicated, your personal librarians, uh, they are responsible for the needs of the students, and they can also guide you and help you with your research. The library commons, this is our space. You can come to the library and, and, and visit the library commons. Uh, we have the library catalog, which you can access in the library commons. Uh, we also have my life and my UNISA, and then you can also do your assignments, and you have also internet for academic purposes. So you do have access to internet, then you use that internet for academic purposes. Um, training, this is key, this is very important. We offer training um, for assignments and research. Uh, we do basic search and then we also help you how to find online journals and we also do introduction to reference works. So what we are doing now currently, we are also visiting uh, public libraries from Ikurleni. If you are uh, at Ikurleni, for an example, you are at Tembisa, you are next to uh, Tembisa West Library or Pumula Library, if you are at uh, Fosloris, uh, we also visited Fosloris Library, and then we've also visited um, uh, uh, Isaac Mukwena uh, Library in Fosloris. So basically what we are doing, we're training our students to use our services. So we generally go there and, and make sure that uh, we provide training so that they cannot, uh, if they cannot travel to UNISA or any other UNISA campuses, we, 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 we take services or we take our services to them. So if you are there, uh, if there are training uh, dates, please make sure that you also come so that we can assist you. Uh, training is very important because once you know how to use the library website, um, you become self-sufficient. You can use the library on your own at any time, um, but we also provide support whenever you encounter any problems. So we also have uh, services for students with special needs. 
We offer limited devices to students with uh, special needs. Uh, devices are available in the library. The, the devices are available in the library, and others are not available at the branches, but they are obtainable from the main uh, library. You can request them from the main library. They can deliver those des devices to to the branches. So that is the email address that you can use to request uh, those assistive uh, devices. Um, once you have that uh, assistive device, once you are done, you can return it back to the branch where you have uh, collected that uh, assistive device, and then they will take it back to, to the main campus. So those are our contact details. Whenever you want to contact us, make sure that uh, you use those contact details, uh, Sunnyside branch contact details. But you can also check um, the UNISA library website to check for other branches that you might also, um, maybe you are next to them, then you can ac uh, access those uh, 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 branches. And those are the times of operations. This is um, what you get from, from the library. As you can see, uh, we have uh, the following services. We have designated areas equipped with assistive technology. Uh, you can also bring somebody to assist you. Uh, that, is, that one is allowed. Uh, you can also uh, use a guide doc um, to access the library. Uh, they are allowed in the library. We also have extended loan period for library material. Um, based on your needs, we can arrange for a longer period uh, for you to use uh, the library material that you have loaned. We also have a wheelchair available on request. So if you come to the campus and you need a wheelchair, just contact the library and then they will uh, bring the wheelchair to where you are. Uh, we also have a dedicated parking. Um, also, like I've indicated, that we have also dedicated uh, parking space. Uh, we also have um, a dedicated person who can assist with uh, sign language. As you can see, Sophie Mabas is doing that. Uh, he, she's the one who uh, most of the time assists us. Whenever maybe there's a, a need for that, please don't hesitate to ask the library for assistance. And then we also have the following audiobook readers. Uh, we have Blaze EZ, we have Book Sense, we have Classmate Reader, Victor Reader, we also have Dolphin Pens and Earphones. These items can be searched in the catalog and requested via the email provided there. So please make sure that um, whenever you need some uh, assistive device, uh, just call the, 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 the library or request them uh, via that email. Um, material can also be delivered to the client via email or on CD or DVD or preloaded on an audio book reader uh, or a person can come and collect in person or we can also use the service of the courier to provide information to you. Who do you contact as we have provided the email address there? Uh, for Braille and other specialized services, we have AXWIT, which is also the key component or key department in terms of providing services to students with disabilities. Please make sure that you visit AXWIT and you ask for more uh, assistance in terms of your services. They are much helpful and they are hands-on, so please make use of uh, their, their services. And we also have their contact numbers here. Uh, you can also um, contact them and uh, definitely they will respond to your queries. Colleagues, I think I've, I'm done with my presentation in terms of the library services. The students are free to contact us at any time. Uh, our service are already available for them. Uh, at a point where they are not satisfied, 
they are free to contact our managers and so forth so that they can get a better uh, uh, assistance. But I also want to encourage our students that whenever we have um, uh, 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 put forward information for them to attend training, please do so, attend training because those trainings are important. They help you and assist you to use the library at your own time, wherever you are because time is of most important. So we don't want our student to waste time searching for information, whereas information is just on palm of their hands. So please make use of our trainings, but in the case that you cannot attend those trainings, we are also available in the library to assist. Thank you colleagues for giving me this time for this presentation. Thank you so, so very much, Mr. Mulapisi. Uh, we move now forward with our program. We are introducing Mr. Malauzi from Computer Labs and Digital Learning Support. Mr. Malauzi? Uh, my name is Ronald Vredani Malauzi. Uh, today, what I'll be touching on is more on uh, Telc Division, which is our technology enhanced learning. Uh, as I've indicated, I'm from uh, Gauteng Region, Technology Enhanced uh, Learning. Uh, the technology and learning we deal strictly with technology. My, it might be my UNISA, my life problems. Uh, this is the department where you're crying to. Uh, we we are tell we have technology. We do enhance the enhance and then the learning part uh, on technology. Let's say you have a, a laptop with a software that you you have purchased and then you are struggling to to install the 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 software. We we are we are able to assist you to install the software uh, we also assist you with the uh, uh, the advanced part of it let's say you want to learn the training part of it or you want to do the learning of the uh, the normal learning on my unisa we are able to assist on that uh, the purpose is to integrate the technology with teaching and learning and use available advice to uh, advices to enhance student learning experience uh, we are currently based in the hub I'm currently based in the hub, which is Sunnyside. Uh, now, the, most of our students, they get confused when we talk of Sunnyside. They go to registration department. We are on the east part of the registration, building number 13 and building number 14. That's where we are, we are situated as a hub. And then the services we offer, we, we give access to computer laboratory. Laboratories give students access to computer to complete assignments, do their research, and access to specialized applic uh, applications. In this case, we have a dedicated computer lab, which is for students with disability, which is based in Building 13. On that building, we have PC with different programs on it. Uh, at the end of it, I will read you the programs that we have. Per, we have five centers, per, for all five centers. I'll be able to I'll try by all means to touch on all of them which center I have one, so that when you go to a center, you'll be able to know which one I'm going to find on the on that center. We also do video conferencing. The video the video feed to contact class or tutorial classes or workshop from central uh, facilitators to remote regional centers. The session is interval and live. Now on this student, please note that you as a student, you are unable to come and book this and say, I want to use video conference. We must get a notice from the your lecture to say, I want to have a contact with my students. I have booked date X with them to come and sit at the campus. This normal, in, in the nowadays, majority of our lectures have substituted this with Microsoft Teams, uh, which they normally have classes now. And then uh, if you had the, the previous speakers, they were talking about short classes, uh, which is the, the academic literacy, which are offered through Teams. Now, majority of our lectures have swapped this from a video conference to Teams, Microsoft Teams. Now, if you have um, you have a laptop and you want your Microsoft to be installed, we can assist, we can give you steps. We can also, if you are struggling, we can come to us in our centers. In each and every center, in UNISA center, they'll be able to assist you to load this. Uh, when you load Teams, you know that the package comes with five. It allows you to, to co connect five devices, meaning you can have five different devices connected with Microsoft packages for free. Unisa will pay for that package. The package will be active for six months, meaning if you install Word, it will be active from now until 
the six months labs. When the six months labs, you just have to go to the internet, connect it, it will activate as long as you are registered. After you have registered, they only give you a period of six months from that you don't have an access to that. You only have an access to the OneDrive, meaning the packages like uh, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, they will be only active when you are registered. My life email and the OneDrive you will use even beyond your study at UNISA. Uh, we offer trainings. Uh, the trainings that we offer, we offer training, the training scheduled uh, the scheduled training session to enhance students' computer literacy skills, Microsoft Office 365 navigation with emphasis on file management, document conversion, and MS Teams. These are the trainings that we offer. The trainings we normally, at the beginning of the year, like what we have been doing at Sunnyside Center, we're offering them face-to-face. And then now we are planning so that we, when when time goes on, we'll be offering the same training towards exam time online, so that those students who can come to us will be able to read them by, uh, on online uh, uh, like on online services. And then the activation of my innocent my life account. Uh, this has these days this has come more of a stress and a pain to most students because now when they try to claim my NISA, they are unable to punch their password, it gives them invalid credentials. Uh, what we, we we normally do at Computer Labs, and then I'll also share our email address at the end so that you can contact us if you have any problem, because currently we have seen that there's a problem with students that after claiming my UNISA password, uh, there's some changes, some password are changed, and then they're unable to log, they end up being frustrated. Some of them are even dropped out. The moment you realize that the contact number is changed, it's no longer a contact number. Do not click continue. Just contact us. We'll give you a form that you complete because of a poppy act. to won't just change the number without your confirmation. Now we'll need you to we'll need to send to you a form that you will complete, and then we'll then change the number with so that we know you are the one who requested this change. We must have a proof because of Poppy Act, we don't just change over the phone. Now, the best way when you have a problem with the number change, please send to the emails that I'm going to send to share at the later stage. Send an email, indicate that I'm trying to change my password, but the problem is when I change my password, the number that is appearing there is not my number. The DLA will send you a DSR-03 form, which will complete it, and then will then ask your colleagues to change your contact details back to the normal one. We have community digital access center, which are called. Uh, we normally the old name was called what telecenters, which a uh, majority of our students are not using it. In Kauteng, we have six. In uh, Pretoria, we have three that are active currently. We have one in Mamilodi East on Samaya Road next to the ZCC Church. We have one in Inkangala. We have another one in uh, Bronco Spread. Uh, those are the three that are currently active that student can access. What happens here is as a student, you are allowed a total of 10 hours per week. Meaning uh, when you divide that, you must spend, a, a, we are allowed only two hours per day. If you visited a, a digital access center, when you get there, what do we allow you to do? As a student, you must be registered. When you get there, you give the operator your student number. They will allow you to use the PC for internet or your research purposes. They will allow you to use the computers in the facilities for a submission of assignment. We don't cover any cost when a student wants to print, if the cost goes to the student. When a student wants to eliminate or doing something, we don't cover that. They allow you two hours per day. It's either you are typing your assignment and submitting it, or you want to do just internet research using their internet. We, give, we allow two hours on that. That's what the, the, the digital access center are used for. Uh, I will also you show you where, where, where to find them in our system at the later stage. And then we give technical student technical support on this. This is where we assist students with their technical challenges that hampers with their studies. Challenges range from Office 365, 
Office 365 academic software upgrade and connectivity uh, queries. Now here, please students note that we don't offer an operating system. We have more students who comes. You said you offer a technical support. My operating system has crashed. Up to this far, the university has, doesn't cover the cost that comes with the operating system. If your operating system has crashed, we advise you to find uh, a technician who will be able to do that. From there, we'll be able to assist you with installation of softwares. Softwares, they might be academic related. You might need a, an antivirus, but note again on antivirus, we use the free one. We don't have, we haven't purchased anything that uh, will protect, will say uh, it's purchased. This is what you can use. Anything that we use, it's what we download from the internet. It's a trial or a free one that they are offered. We don't have anything that is purchased that is having a license. Now, please note when you have challenges, we can assist with cleaning viruses on your laptop, viruses on your memory stick, installing Office 365 packages, if I have covered before, running updates on your PC, uh, installation of academic software that these are what the lectures gives you to say uh, you can install these. We, we are able to do this. Service for persons with disability, access to computer with uh, uh, devices and software tell made for student with tailor made with a student with uh, uh, disabilities. As I've indicated, we have a computer lab which is dedicated. We have about six machines with different functions. I'll try to cover them at the end. The what we have uh, when 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 we're going towards the end. We have six that are situated at building 13. Currently, there's no one who is just situated there. If you come, you want to use the computer lab, contact people at Building 14, they will give you a DLA, or you go to Building 13, you ask a security to call a DLA, the DLA will assist you. Uh, they, will call a, they will call a DLA to come and assist you at Building 13. Uh, how can you physically have access to the services? This is Kauteng Region Map. We have an office in, in Pretoria, which is a Sunnyside campus, not the registration part, but building 13 and 14. That's where we are. The registration and building 10 is something else. We are based at building 13 and 14. That's where when you said you are going to your center or Houting region, you should go. We have an office in Ikurleni. We have an office in Johannesburg. I think now they've moved to 124th Street. We have an office in uh, Florida, which we call it our uh, science campus. They have a building which is just dedicated for Houting region. When you get there, if you want color region, you tell them you want computer labs. They will tell you to. They will say they will take you to the building. We have a, a office in uh, in, in Fernhem, which is in which is in Val. These are the five offices that we have, the centers that we have that we offer the same service with the service that you should get in value you should be able to get it in sunnyside now do i'm advising students don't just spend your money coming to sunnyside for a service that you can get it in kurleni or you can get it in val hey, how can you remotely have access to the services uh, we, we 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 give online support and now for this service, to, for you to find these services, I, I am hoping to get a, a attendance register where I'll ask our child manager to enroll you to a project site for how then when, whenever there is a training, it's advertised on those project sites, which is under my UNISA. Whenever we have anything in the region, it's either my UNISA or it's online support is there. Now we offer a training for students. This is face to face. We offer online support. The online support is when, let's say, you are far from any center. You feel like I need just to access my 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 package. It's expired, and then I'm trying to to download this package. It's giving me a problem. Instead of you traveling all the way to the center, we we allow you to book a training with what a, a, an online support with one of the DLA. The training is booked via Teams. You can just go to Teams and then you book, and then we also have a link for bookings where you go and do the booking to say, I want this training on this day. You book a, a, a DLA, the DLA will be able to honor the, the appointment on a day and then assist you. But remember, if you want an online support, you 
I beg that you connect on the specific term that is agreed upon because majority of students, they book these services. And then when you book these services, it means one GLA must get out of the computer lab and have a corner where you will, they will have a communication with you without having any interference. Now, the computer labs are left empty only to find that there's no student who's logging in. It means you must also have internet connection because for us to be able to assist you online, you will must be able to connect with you online. Uh, we also offer online support on password management. We have many students who will be complaining, as I indicated, that my password has just changed. I'm not the one who changed it. When I go to my number, I change it. I find out the number is not mine. On that, the online support, well, because of a poppy act, we decided to say, when you call on this, when you send an email to say, I need this, and my number has changed, we will send you a document where you complete that document. After completing the document, that's what we'll be able to take the step with you to say, OK, because somebody is changing it, let's try to change it again after changing the getting the new password from the server. Let's change it from my UNISA site again to something that you'll remember. Uh, we offer my UNISA general queries. Uh, on my UNISA general queries, it's when you have problem with my UNISA. Maybe when you click certain things, your modules are not appearing. You can book us using the, using the link below. You can book us and say, I want these services, but these services, I'm unable to get these services on a date. How can I do? And then now we, you book a time, we'll be able to attend to it. And then when we book it, we we able to connect via Teams. And then when you click, I'll be saying, click this, click that. You'll be able to access this. You'll be able to, we are able to, it's, it's more of uh, you, you contact, but it, we are online. Uh, there's MS Office General Queries. Now, this is when I indicated, like I indicated, when your office package is not working. When you try to log on Teams, it says logged out, restart, and give you these frustration messages. We're able to assist. And the, the technical support, this is the installation of software or the updates. Instead of you coming to the computer labs, we're able to do this online. The important part on this online support is you must have an connection. Now, uh, this is the link that we have for, uh, for bookings. When you book us, you go to HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash teenyurl.com forward slash technology hyphen enhanced hyphen learning. It will open a, a form for you where you'll be able to book us. Now, remember when you book, you won't be able to book a specific DLA. It will check, the system will check for you who is available at that time. That's where you'll be able to click and say, uh, when you click, it, you don't select a name. It will allocate to whoever is available on that time. Because you might look for DLA X and you find that DLA X on a day, it's on leave or they have another engagement. Now, that's why the system was made so that you don't book one person, you uh, it book it randomly. Now, randomly, it means that you book anyone of a DLA who is in Gauteng. Uh, Gauteng Region UNISA site, uh, when you join the project site, you'll be able to get regional announcement, training session uh, recordings. You'll be able to get training schedule and additional support. Now, this is the project site that I was talking about. You said, I'll ask my line, my, my, my tell to, to, to uh, if I get a, when we get a register, I'll ask them to add you so that you'll have this access. Now, this will assist you when there's something that the region is doing, you'll get an, a, a, an email on my life email address with a, in a form of announcement. When there's a training session, you can go and view it on that uh, on that project site. Let's say there was a tutorial classes that you have missed. You'll be able to join on to, uh, on that site. The training schedule, if there's a training that you want you want to attend, you'll be able to have a training schedule for the whole Houghton region, not for a specific center. I've been talking about Sunnyside. You may find that you are in Val. Now you want to know when the Val will have certain trainings. You'll be able to attend them there. The additional support when there's a counseling support, when there is uh, literature, academic literature as indicated, you will be able to get all those uh, 
all those uh, schedule there or additional support there. Now, these are the email address of DLAs in housing. We have about five in Sunnyside. We have three in Jovek. We have three in Kurleni. We have three in Florida and two in Val office. Now, these are the email addresses. When you send an email address to that, they will be able to, to, to respond to you. Please note that you, uh, we have a, a, a turnaround time of 24 hours on emails because it might happen somebody sending email now, I'm in this training, meaning it will be delayed, but at least give us 24 hours to come back to you because of the volume of the emails that comes in. Uh, now I can go to the Mayunisa part. Okay, the machines that I was highlighting in Sunnyside. Let me close this. In Sunnyside, we have a machine which deals with, which has a dragon. Uh, it's a speak to text dragon, naturally speaking, Pro V12 version. We have it. We have one machine that deal with a uh, help read and write licenses. We have one head mouse. We have two keyboard that are zoom large, text large. There are two. Uh, let me not talk about the printer. We have two machines that are installed the Joe Pro. We have uh, Easy Converter Dolphin and the two machines that have Magnify Reader. This is the service that we give in Sunnyside. Oh, we also have an open book, open uh, software disk. And then Pelco Camera. And then uh, Darberry Braille Translator. Uh, the, the numbers that I hear, these are the numbers that you can dial. It will ring to all three or four or whatever number appearing, DLAs. But I prefer you send them an email unless the meta is agent because you might call and then you end up being frustrated because nobody's picking up a phone. They have another engagement because uh, you may find that you are calling. I have a student who travel all the way from wherever they are here. Uh, what what my, my 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 understanding is the person needs the attention immediately instead of saying wait let me deal with the phone now if you send an email it's easy for a person after dealing with whoever traveled to come and send to attend to the the matter that's on hand all right in sunny side we have six uh, six computer in a in the in the in a, in a lab those computers have the following softwares. We have one computer which has a, a easy converter, Dolphin. We have two computers with Magnify Reader, Zoom Text. We have one computer with an open book version V9 software disk. We have a Pell Core camera for open for open book we have a, a dax blurry translator we have index basic blurry ambassador we have one machine with brilliant display those are six machines, uh, Swift, uh, six machines that we have and the different software in Pretoria Sunnyside. Now I'll go to Ekurleni. Just a moment. Ekurleni, we have four machines. I'm trying to check the software they have. Uh, apologies, there's nothing up updated on the core learning part. Now, the one I'm I have covered it's for Sunnyside. It's updated. I'm sure of. Now I I am not. And then the Joe Beck one. We have six machines. 
We have one machine with speech to text, Dragon naturally speaking. It's a version uh, V12, Pro V12. We have licensed text, help read and write license. We have head mouse, one machine with head mouse. We have two machines with Zoom text light keyboards. We have Jiao Pro v, uh, version 15 or two machines. We have one machine with Convert the Dolphin. And then we have Fine Reader, um, one machine with a Fine Reader. And then the uh, Index Basic and a brilliant uh, display. Those are the machines in Johannesburg Campus, uh, Johannesburg Center. Yeah, those are the machines that are updated. Uh, there is something that the, the university has come up with. Uh, the main part here, what I want to cover, is the, the university has asked students to do, to upload their pictures. Now, a majority of students are struggling on how to upload these pictures. Now, what I'm going to do is to demonstrate how to upload the picture. And then I'll try to all talk over it. For you to upload a picture, after logging in on my UNISA, you go to where your name is. There is a drop button. When you click on a drop button, you get a dashboard, profile, grade, message, preference, the last one is logout. Now you go under profile. When you click on the profile, it will open a page like this. On top, you will have a menu button on the top left, and then you have a dashboard and calendar. That's the, the top bar. Now we're focusing on this space just under reset page for default. That's where it says edit profile. Now, kindly student, please note that you won't be able to do this using your cell phone. What I advise students to do is to take a selfie using a cell phone, send it to from maybe their personal email address to my life email address, go to a desktop or a laptop, download that picture, you'll be able to do it. If you don't do that over on, on, a, on a mobile view, this part doesn't appear. If you are using your cell phone, you won't be able to have edit profile. Now, when you click on edit profile, it will give you your names in full. It will ask you some name, email addresses. It's, it's something that it's automated. It, it, they took what right there. Now we focus, you scroll down and you will find focus where it says use picture. Under use picture, you have a current picture nine because I haven't uploaded any picture. New picture, this is where we're focusing on. Now it gives a message to say maximum file is only 50 megabytes allowed. For me to upload a picture, I'll go to the ad. When I click on add, it will ask me, it will give me recent files, upload a file, URL downloader, private file, Wikimedia. Now I'll click on upload a file. When I click upload a file on the right hand side, it has attachment, choose a file, no file chosen. Now I must choose a file. When I click choose a file, meaning I must know where my picture is. If you have downloaded a picture, when you go to download, you will find your picture. This is when you, you have sent a, 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 a picture from private email to your Gmail, as long as you're able to access the PC as internet, you go to the PC, you download that picture from the email, the way you have sent it. You will be able to know, you must know the picture's name. And when you click on the picture, I hope I have a picture here for demonstration purposes. Oh. Now you select where your picture is. When you click open, it will give you the name of the picture that you have selected. Now, what I've selected now, it's under the PDF. They want you to land with the JP, JPE to show that it's a picture. From there, you come and click upload. The moment you click upload, this picture is going to appear here. It will appear next to your name after refreshing. 
Now, that, please, student, let's do that. They said at least three days before you write your exams, this picture should be uploaded. I'm not sure of the punishment at the moment. I don't want to lie to you, but this is what they are saying to you. Now, I also plead with our students to say, let's forget to do the ESA because most of our students we have a problem of a hearsay. Let's focus. Let's read this notice. This is our notice. Or when you go to my UNISA page, before you even log in, please go and read what they are saying. Because this information is sent to students most of the time before they, if the staff even know about it. Because this is where your university communicate with you. They communicate with you using this notice. Now let's stop the hearsay from the friends. You will hear somebody say the uh, exams has been moved. If the exams has been moved, because the impact is for the whole university, it will come and be in this notice. Let's focus at this notice, understand, read and understand. Before, because most of the time you find students come and say, hey, <clears throat> I'm getting an error when I do 2023 honors and PGC. What is it? I, I'm not even aware as a staff. I'll say, let's go and read. When you go and read, it's something that you have spent your time, your money to come and read something with me that you can read from home. Please, let's develop those, this uh, tendency of reading. And then when we have events, some of our events are done in this page. You will be able to know of most of the events that are happening. When you click on honors and postgraduate, you'll know what's happening tomorrow. When you click on join workplace, you know, these are for students. This is where you'll find. Now, uh, these are the rules that normally when you write exam, they say, go and check what the rule says. Please don't, when you, before you write your exam, go and read the rules and policies as a student. This is where we find them. Before you can even come to us and say, I'm looking for one, two, three. This is what you, we expect you to go and read. Now, there is this information which it's provided for you. Please let's read and understand it's from the outside department. Let's read this information and understand it so that we'll know where we're going. Now, inside the modules, what I'll do because of the time, I'll just touch on submission of assignment and reading the announcement because majority of students doesn't want to read assignments who doesn't want to read announcement. We have students who are complaining that FAC 1501 assignment is not open. When you go to that module, the lecturer wants you to read before the assignment will open. Now, it's the student's responsibility to read the announcement, to follow and understand the content of the module. When you don't understand the content of the module, kindly contact the lecturer. Because as DLAs, we have limited knowledge on the content of your module. The lecture is the key. The lecture is the owner. Now you can you contact your lecture. Said your, my assignment. You said it will open on this day. Up until this day, it's not yet open. Because when you send it to me, I'm still going to ask you the lecture and then divert to the lecture. Now this is time consuming. To save time, let's know who our lectures are. Most of the lectures contact details are on our tutorial 101. Now we must go through tutorial 101 understand what tutorial 101 is saying. It will be easy. You'll find it easy for you to start you with UNISA. Now, I've seen majority of students complaining about going to this place. Let's avoid these two tabs. The tab which says my admin and the tab which says my modules 2021. These are the tabs that have information which is was used on a system, the system that was using on 2021 beyond going backwards. Now, the 2022-2023, this year is 2023. We focus on my modules only. Let's forget about these two, because I've seen students complain that when I go to my admin, my assignment are saying closed, and then the due date is not yet closed. We are no longer using this tab. It has an old information. We focus on a tab which says my modules. When you go in on my modules, it has my admin. When you go to my, my admin, you're going to find everything that happens at the campus the building, everything that happens at the depart admin department, your registration, your payments, all those information are here. On this side, what I will just uh, demonstrate for you is when you click on, when I click to my admin, 
this is where you'll be able to find all the most of the information that you are looking for. Most of the information that you are looking for, you'll find them here. Let's use these tabs. Let's not just ignore them because majority of students, what they need is just to go and find the assignment. That's it. Some of the information that you are looking for, they are on this tab. Please let's you you uh, get used to this tab. Know what they contain, and then you will and then you will find it easy. Now the focus that I have, I want to focus on submitting assignment. Uh, majority of you may find that your yours. Okay, let me zoom again. You may find that when you log in, your screen looks like this. You get frustrated that you don't find the tools. For you to access the tools, you go on the top left. There is a menu with the three lines. It's orange. When you click on that menu, it will give you the tools on the left. The tools. Now, we don't just go and click assignment one. Let's get this new habit. Let's read and understand. What is the welcome message you say? because some of the matters are addressed on the welcome message. But because I didn't read, I won't even know what's happening. When I go through, the first thing is to go through the welcome messages. After going through your welcome message, please go and read, check if there is any announcement. On this module, there's no announcement loaded. If there's no announcement loaded, Please check if you have any study materials. For those who are doing postgrad or and or uh, postgrad, majority of you you won't find any study material. Please don't sit at home and fall dead and say I'm still waiting for material to be delivered. Because when you realize that the material won't be, you might find that it's late, exam is closed. Let's go on the system. We'll find our materials. Now on this, it's when I'm checking the study materials. On this one, you have tutorial letter 101. This is what I was referring to. On tutorial letter 101, I won't open it for you. You may find that it has nine to 15 pages. Please go through tutorial letter 101. It will assist you to understand the content of the module and where to go when you have problems. Instead of you asking friends, this will be the answer. Most of the answers are here. And then we have seen students complaining about if do I have any any textbook? Uh, now you come and check here. And the under prescribed material, this student has a prescribed book. When you buy, please double check the you are you buying the correct edition and then the, the author. All these things must match. Unless you specify that you can use another version. You can contact the lecture and say, I'm struggling to get version X but I have this version, can I use it? The lecture will be the one to give you the correct answer on this one. Now, when you go to submission of assignments, we have an assignment called quiz, and then we have a written assignment. We have an external assignment, it's for the student who are doing EUP, but for this type of assignment, this is a quiz. Oh, it's PD it has already closed. When you open a quiz, now on quiz, please check the, the if it has a time limit. I have seen students complaining that they just logged in and then the time limit has vanished. You may find a quiz which has the minimum time of 10 minutes, meaning if after 10 minutes, when you click start the quiz, you won't be able to do assignment, they will take whatever. If you have answered one question, they are going to say this person have answered one question. You won't be able to do anything. Now, they, they, let's check them. When you do the quiz, check your this. Uh, what do you call it? Check the, the your electricity schedule. If you will have and then check your connectivity. Do you have enough data? Because the moment you click, that time limit doesn't wait. If you your phone crashes, or your laptop crashes, or you lose network, the server in the main campus keeps on continuing, it's counting down. Now it's, it's advisable that check your schedule, the, the load shedding schedule before you do your quiz, because I've had people saying, I was right doing my quiz, the load, the, uh, I had a problem with uh, load shedding. Now check your load shedding schedule, 
make sure that when you do that, you are in a comfort zone. You don't have to do it and you find that it's only one hour. Now you are no longer comfortable at a certain zone. You want to move to a zone X. Please check those and then do it because the moment you click, it, it doesn't stop. It continues. This is where the problem is. Uh, I'm copying this to a chat. This is where you can follow if you are stuck with my UNISA. Just click on the link. It will open all this. Now you just choose the site that you feel like I'm struggling with viewing the prescribed book or I'm struggling with uploading. They will guide you on how to do it. Now I'm sending this on the chat. Yeah, it sent yeah. just by clicking that you'll be able to have the the you'll be able to have all the the links if you want to do password reset up until the last one. Now you can do that at any time at your own time. I thank you very much. Mr. Malaudzi. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so, so very much for such a comprehensive presentation. Students, I'm sure you are now, you can see, it's evident that you are definitely in the revolution of technology. And please, please take heed of all of these. And Mr. Malaudzi, may I kindly hijack you that next time we have a follow up of this presentation because I, for one, I'm also struggling still to log into my UNISA. And you know that the factors that you have just alluded to, technology, access, connectivity, load shading, and all those politics. Sometimes they become a serious hindrances for students to be able to become part and included into our services. In that regard, Mr. Malaudzi, I would also like to request that you explain to our students. I heard earlier on in your presentation, you mentioned DLAs, and I'm not sure if that acronym you were able to explain it. May you kindly do us an honor to explain that so that students can know what is it that it entails. And another announcement, students, I realize that we have four guests, um, Ngele, Tekiso, Unami, and Nasmira. May you kindly provide us with your email address for UNISA so that we can be able to send you the slides and the recordings of the session of today. Please kindly uh, make sure that you put them in the chat box. Thank uh, Ms. Bia? Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, sorry, can you please just repeat the, the question? There was a student who just came in. Oh, I was saying, can you kindly do us an honor to explain the acronym DLA? Earlier in your presentation, you make use of this acronym. So I'm not sure whether we all understand what it means, especially pertaining to all the outline that you've just explained now regarding to the labs. All right. Uh, my apologies for that. The, the, the name is simple, say Digital Learning Advisor. Thank you, Tans, Mr. Malauzi. So I take it you're done with the presentation. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, sir. Now, colleagues and students and all our guests, may we are proceeding now. We are actually at the crux of it the questions and the answers uh, slot. May you kindly ask your questions or put them on the chat? You are most welcome. We are here for engagement. Kindly engage us so that we know what is it that we can add to the support that we are trying to gear up for you guys. Thank you so much. Waiting for your questions. This is Janine again. Um, uh, I just quickly want to um, show another form that uh, we didn't speak about. This is the form. Uh, this is specifically for the students, obviously. This is the application form for special exam arrangements. Um, so if you if you might need um, more time or um, uh, some other devices or so to help you, um, then you need to complete this form. This form um, is then sent when here, for instance, requirements and aids where applicable, at home with laptop, internet access, Adobe Acrobat yes, Reader, um, these are the kinds of things that you could might, maybe could request. Okay. okay, here you ask for extra time or if it's an oral exam or whatever. Um, also, your medical practitioner also needs to uh, give a motivation here why you would need a special exam. Um, and then um, this would then be presented. Um, here is an email address. It needs to go to examinations. There are the contact details of the of the people as well. Um, so if you are uh, needing uh, special exams or special arrangement for exams, then I'm going to go back to the beginning. You need to complete this form. We'll put the form 
also on the chat so that it is available for the students and you need to complete it and you need to send it as quickly as possible to the examinations department so that they can um, start doing those arrangements because sometimes they need to do um, uh, special printing and I don't know what. So, uh, but please complete this form if you need special arrangements for your exams. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, the first question will go to Mr. Lausi. Can you repeat that uh, part of information regarding the um, profile pictures? I think he said the profile picture must be uploaded three days, I think he said before exam. Can you just repeat on that part? And then the second question is regarding um, bursaries for people with disabilities. I know there's a postgrad uh, bursary or bursaries at UNISA. But then uh, I, I don't know if they do say if for this financial year we have like 20 bursaries available for students, let's say let's reserve five of those bursaries specifically for people with or disabilities or what kind of assistance is available to ensure that people with disabilities secure bursaries? Thank you. The matter of profile picture, you can upload it anytime from today. The, the, due, the cut date, it has to be at least three days before you write your exams. Uh, I personally believe this was because of what was happening where students will find going and sit with friends to write for them. Now, remember when you write using Invigilator app or um, Moodle program tool, there will be a camera watching you. Now, it, I believe it's just an issue of checking whoever uploaded the picture and the person who's writing the exam if it's still the same person. I hope I've answered. It's not like you have to wait for three, a day, three, three days before. You can upload it today, but don't pass at least when you're writing tomorrow and you're uploading it today. They are saying at least three days before you write exam. Thank you. I see there was also a question regarding bursaries. I'm not sure whether Ms. Mutsepe will be able to assist us in that regard. Ms. Mutsepe, can you advise where can student um, forward this kind of questions to? Can they forward it to Mr. Nkuna or will you be able to briefly advise? Thank you. Actually, yeah, actually they should forward it to Mr. Nkuna because he's the one dealing with uh, uh, bursaries for students with disabilities. Okay, students, I'm sure you've seen on the chat box, Mr. Nkuna's details were provided there for further information. And also Mr. Moodley, the email address is on the chat box. I see there's a hand from Tekiso. Tekiso, you're welcome. Thank you very much and my greetings to all the speakers and the guest day. My question is directed to Mr. Mulawuz regarding the, the reading of a certain unit prior to the conclusion of the exam. I mean, the, the assignment, if one didn't actually do that and then you know, would you does it mean that uh, one misses the ex the, the the opportunity to conclude the the assignment and the second question will also be about um, that form that uh, the previous speaker spoke about can one submit such a form at any given time prior to the exam or is there a limited time? And then uh, the last question would be data of the devices for the students that are living with disability and they are paying the fees for themselves. Can they be assisted with devices if they can't afford them? And the other thing is that uh, during the inquiry, sometimes I hear that I'm referred to Mr. Nguna, but sometimes when one inquire from him, he will direct you to, he will be quick, yes, to respond to you. But the person that he refers us to, that person sometimes doesn't even bother to come back with the answer as to whether will you will you be assisted or not. And then I don't know whether that uh, issue can be uh, addressed in this platform. Those are my few concerns. Thank you very much for the opportunity. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, if I may, Melarat. Go ahead, say thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the one for assignment, I'm not sure if I had it clearly in that uh, second, uh, because uh, the assignments, the assignments that if you missed, you won't be able to write uh, exams. But I'm not sure if the question was directed to the exam point of view or the closing of assignment. Can you please just repeat that part of assignment? Yes, Mr. Olozi, it will be like you will be uh, missing that opportunity, of course. Uh, during that time where uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, it, that exam is made available uh, simply because one didn't have the knowledge that you have to click to where it says read the certain unit like he, you have clearly explained it to us today. It, I think it came to my sense correctly as you, you have explaining it because I also missed one because I didn't read what the, the lecture was saying. Read this unit before you go on with the uh, assignment. Warren say, OK, you are, you are, when I give example, I give an example on FAC 1501. All right. What's happening here? Uh, there, um, I think I, I can't say you will miss the exam. It depends on the module. There are modules that if you miss assignment number one, you won't be able to, you, uh, you, you, you'll be excluded from exam. Now, the information here you can get from the lecture to say, OK, I've missed assignment X. Now, am I going to get a granted opportunity to write exam? This is where I'm saying the, the lectures are the one with authority on these matters. It's like opening and closing of assignments that the one we are just support structure to them. Now, the one who can give you an exit and a proper answer is the primary lecture of this module. You send the email using my life email address to say that I've missed assignment number one on your module. Uh, please advise if I'll be able to be granted a chance to write exam. They are the one who will be able to give you that answer. Thank you, sir. Are you answered? I see you also have another question that talks about where you inquire about data and devices. Uh, Ms. Margaret, I don't know if you can really be able to assist us there, or does it touch on the matter of NSFAS or the buzzeries? May you kindly advise us? Thank you. Uh, with regard to issues of data, um, I think they should contact uh, Messi Banda because he, she's the one, our acting deputy director she's the one dealing with the the issues of data and also uh, there is one other information which is which might even help other students is that apart from uh, getting a computer through uh, NESFAS, you might also you may also get a computer through the university and miss sibanda is the one who is also responsible for uh, making sure that students uh, get uh, computers. Even though uh, the computers you get from the institution won't be the same, won't have the same softwares like the one you get from uh, Doll Bazari, because with Doll, what you get is a software, specialized software, which goes hand in hand with your disability and any other device which you might get. Thank you. Uh, Messi Banda's email address is, uh, OK, I'll, I'll send it through chat, through the chat. Um, my question is um, regarding students with disabilities who are applying for special examinations. So my case is a bit um, complex because I'm visually impaired. Um, I have extreme myopia in my medical term. So um, I have prescribed spectacles and contact lenses. So as I've indicated in my registration that I have visual impaired, um, the uh, university has sent me a form that, okay, we can see that you've stated that you have a disability, therefore, here's a form, take it and to the medical practitioner and um, he or she must fill it, providing evidence that you do have um, indeed that visual impurity. 
So I took it to the optometrist and the optometrist said, no, I cannot fill this form because I'm not a medical doctor. And I took it to my general practitioner and then he was like, but you have spectacles and you have um, your contact lenses. And I don't see that as needing any special um, examination in terms of extra time and all of that. So uh, my question is, I, I, I don't want to come up with excuses. If something happens to me, maybe let me say I'll be writing an exam and my spectacles happen to um, break and then I don't have contact lessons at the moment. I don't want to come up with excuses saying, I've stated the fact that I have disabilities and all that and all that. So what do I therefore do if there is no medical doctor willing to fill up that form because they all state that I have spectacles. So there won't be any necessity for special examination. What I think, what would be great if you could do, if you could um, just write an email with um, what you've explained now um, to us, um, to me, um, I think my email address was on the invitation that you have all received. This is Janine speaking. So if you can write an email uh, and explain everything that you've now said with regards to the difficulties also of, of getting a medical practitioner to uh, sign for you so that you um, you know that you're unable to do the form. But explain that all of all to us and then we can take it on and um, maybe speak to the examinations department and um, on a personal level, deal with you and see if there's maybe anything that can be done and um, have some discussions. It's difficult now to just give an answer um, because this is a very individual issue. So if you can just do that, send us an email explaining everything and then we will take it from there if that is OK with you. OK, thank you. I will do so. Uh yeah, in addition to what she is saying, uh, if you belong to an organization uh, which maybe uh, they know your disability, like, you know, uh, your National Council for the Blind, uh, I think you can use that to motivate uh, why you need a certain uh what do they call it why you need certain uh service from us they they are the ones who can tell us if your doctor is unable to tell us thank you okay ma'am um thank you very much so another question is that because a medical doctor cannot provide that evidence an optometrist is the one who gives the prescript um spectacles so can he give me that prescription stating that where um, is exactly my problem and um, how extreme is it? And I'll, I'll, I'll upload that prescription in my email. Is that okay? Um, so you, you're speaking regarding an optometrist? Yes, because he's the one who prescribes glasses yeah. and contact lenses for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, you can find yes, sorry. Yes, okay, sorry. Yeah. yes. Yes, exam department actually uh, allows provision for medical reports because they know that uh, your doctor is the one who knows you better. So if you went to a doctor and uh, he or she prescribed uh, spectacles for you, that is also uh, admissible in as far as your exam arrangements are concerned. Okay. Okay, I will go to the optometrist and ask for a prescription, but he cannot fill the, the medical form because he says he's not registered with the medical board and he's not a doctor. So, but he knows what's wrong with me. Okay, yeah, as I've said, please yeah, send us the email with all the information and um, maybe go to the optometrist as well to get um, whatever they can give you. And then we will engage with exams as well, and then we will take it on there. Okay. Good question. And just to add, perhaps maybe the specialist, the ophthalmologist, they are the best people mm. to actually give you that kind of a recommendation letter. Mm. Uh, while we're still at it, I see there's also a follow-up question regarding the forms. Um, I think it's Siki. 
Gizi is asking how often do we have to file the form? Jenin, will you be able to assist there or Ms. Mutsipe? Thank you. Yeah, actually the form, you have to fill it once. As long as your disability is a permanent one, like for an example, if you are visually impaired, you can fill it once. You know, you are physical. If, if your disability is physical, you can fill it once. But if your, your disability is temporary, uh, you can fill it uh, according to the stages of uh, uh, your disability. Like for an example, uh, if maybe for an, uh, you've got a temporal disability, then uh, that's where you can fill it. But it's felt once. And then exam department uh, will make sure that they capture that information. Uh, unless if maybe there are changes in your disability, then yes, you can uh, fill it again. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mutsepe. May I also be allowed to make a follow up question regarding that? Ms. Mutsepe, I realize that some of the students, they are actually, they are not capacitated. That form doesn't give options. Like, for example, if a student has autism, you know, it doesn't say. I think some of the students, that's why they become so disadvantaged because there isn't a category there where they can specify and mark that this is what they need. Do you have any advice to this regard? Can they write? Are they allowed to write? on that form to disclose the type of disability that they have so that they can get support. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, with categories, we've, we've got 22 categories here at UNISA, and one of the category is disability not mentioned. So if the student can fill in that category and sometimes you find that the student has multiple disability so in that in in that case the student can fill in uh, in that category to make sure that he gets because what is more important to us as the institution is what service we can render to a student so as long as the student has a medical report which uh, in a way helps us to understand the nature of the disability plus uh, the kind of service which we have to offer to the student. And lucky enough, as of last year, I think the forms are also available on registration when you register online because it's no longer a uh, paper based. Uh, the special assistant form is available. The special arrangements form is also available online. So if the student can, when they register, go to uh, like after they, they, they filled, they, they should fill in uh, that question which which asked you about the nature of your disability. They should indicate and then they say yes. And then thereafter, uh, that's when uh, they will clarify their issue if they need the kind of service which they need because uh, in that section it will ask you about the nature of service which you would like us to help you with. So is it through exam department, through uh, exam arrangements or through uh, it's exam arrangements, it's study material, it's orientation and mobility, it's prescribed books. Students can just indicate which part they will uh, fill and then they fill it in accordance with their needs because we understand that students have different needs. Thank you. Thank you so very much for that, Ms. Mutsepe. I see we have a follow up question from uh, Tekiso. And in Gele, in that format, take you so you can go ahead immediately. In Gele can take the stand. Thank you, guys. Okay, okay, thank you very much. I'm saying while Mr. Mulauzu was explaining uh, to my questions, I was knocked off by the low shading, so I'm back. So I just wanted to find out uh, would it be a crime maybe to, to go back and just, uh, you know, you know, answer my questions, or will, will there be an opportunity where I will? get my response somewhere. Thank you. So I'm sure Mr. Malauzu wouldn't mind 
you want him to go through i realized that earlier on you wanted him to go through with you how to paste or upload a picture actually, actually with mr mulawzi i'm I, i'm covered what he explained okay. the, the, the last two questions were based on the Data devices okay. is the, the form and whether when if you are not paid by you are paying through NSFAS, can you be assisted in terms of the devices that are provided by the disability unit in the in UNIS? Yes, thank you. So it was actually answered, but I'm sure Ms. Mutsepe wouldn't mind to go through that again because if I'm to quote her, I may not be able to do that verbatim. So she's here, then I'm sure she can go through with you again. Thank you. Ms. Mutsepe, please. Uh, Sekiso wanted to find uh, out about the data and the devices. Okay. Remember, with, you explained it earlier on. Can you please go ahead, go through again with what you said earlier on? You really okay. explained it very well regarding Ms. Sibanda being able to intervene in that regard. Yes. Actually, uh, what I said was that uh, Ms. Sibanda is the one who is responsible for uh, data and connectivity at large in as far as uh, your devices are concerned. And uh, irrespective of your disability, uh, these devices are given to any student uh, who, who, who has and who doesn't have a disability. Like for an example, if you have a problem uh, with getting a computer, the university uh, has a project wherein uh, Ms. Sibanda is the project manager dealing with the uh, dispatching of uh, those computers to students who are in need. So I have provided uh, her email address and uh, I think uh, she can be able to help you. Thank you. Now we are coming to the evaluation form. I would like to hand over to Ms. Mahonga, who can present that. Thank you, Dad. Uh, thank you, Ms. Sibia, for the opportunity once more. Uh, we are going to be uploading a link on the chat where you can click and give us feedback on this uh, session this morning. Please feel free to also add any extra information that you would like to share with us. Uh, the link has just been uploaded now. Please, please, please uh, complete the, 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 the form. The information will actually help us a lot because we are also learning in this process and meeting you is the ideal process to know exactly what the challenges are in terms of supporting students with disability. Please uh, click on the form and if you struggle, just indicate on the chat so that we can see if we can share it on email with you. Thanks. Uh, first of all, I think I would like to say thank you to the students for your participation um, here today. It is wonderful to see that we had students who came and who participated in this. Um, please, um, if you have any more questions or so, you can still put it on the chat. We will go through the chat afterwards and we will see what other questions are there that need to be that need to be answered. And we will do that and we will get back to you. Make sure that if you have signed in with another email address that you at the moment also have put in your um, UNISA, your My Life email address on the chat as well, so that we can engage with you and that we can send things to you. You can't do it to the to any other um, email address. So make sure that you have done that as well. Also, then I would very much like to thank Ms. Um, Sophie Mabasu for doing the um, signing for us today. We've gone a bit over time and I think we, we need to finish. Thank you very much, Ms. Sophie, for having been here, for having done the signing for us and supporting our students in that sense as well. Thank you that we can just always call on your number and um, you are willing to, to help. Um, we really appreciate that. To all my colleagues and everybody who's been um, here also doing the presentations, um, and uh, answering questions. Thank you very much to the folks at the, in, the, in the background um, that have helped with making this thing possible today. We also just want to thank those people. Uh, Ms. Lerati, Sibia, I just want to thank you for having been the program director. I think you've done a good job. 
and um, you've run the program very well for us. So thank you to everybody. Um, please make sure that you complete the um, evaluation form. It's very important for us. And we will then also, um, I will put the form also on, on the chat. So please go and have a look. There will be information there on the chat as well. Um, back to you, Lerati. Thank you. I would like to extend my heartfelt appreciation to our students. You guys, you make us to be here. Without you, we're actually jobless. Thank you so much. And please do not hesitate to contact either of us. I've already sent you guys the invite for this session. So you, you are most welcome to ensure that you make follow-ups, anything that you need, or our Act Suite department, my colleagues as well. I'm sure that you've seen on the chats that they've put all their contact information. I would like to thank Oh, guys, sorry, before I think I see my colleagues now are nudging me to give you this information. We will email you the evaluation form. It looks like it's not opening. We're having some technical problems like take you so ahead earlier on. So colleagues and um, students, I was still at it. I was still thanking you very much warmly. Students, thank you very, very much. You have no idea how much you know. It's, it's just beyond words description to thank you. Because indeed, if you guys are not here, like my colleague has said earlier on that, Without the slogan, the mantra, <laughs> nothing about nothing about us. Without, without us, guys. Thank you very much. And I would like to also extend my appreciation to our heads of facilitation and learning, Dr. Nduli and Ms. Bonzai. Even though we didn't afford them an opportunity to speak, I'm sure if they have something that they want to alert or they want to uh, include, they can do so now. And also appreciation deeply to our regional academic coordinators, the ones who have just met, ensured that they leave whatever that they had to do today and join us today, and our colleagues and guests. And colleagues, also I'd like to extend my appreciation deeply to Ms. Mabaso. Ms. Mabaso, had it not been of you, of you today, we would not have been able to communicate to some of our students. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm leaving anyone. Um, I think I'm closing now. Thank you so much.